Project All Road TDI. I a um, little update since uh, last week. Um, I've got the uh, engine ready to go in as I did last week, but I had to prep some stuff on the chassis here. So um, one of the things I did, or you know, several things I did, I, I prepped. Uh, you know, the engine mounts got two new mounts for the rear there. They're so cheap now, I'd be uh, silly not to. Uh, the mounts on the front here are the TDI mounts right off of the Passat. Both of them are in good condition. No point in uh, wasting money on stuff that works. Um, I moved over the um, the power steering line. Uh, the 2.7T power steering line would have come to here, and then it's connected at the back of the uh, of the engine on the 2.7T. Whereas on this TDI and all the other four cylinders, it comes over to uh, the left front corner of the engine. So I took this off of the TDI. I I did reuse this shield. This shield is not present on the four cylinder cars, but I don't know, it belonged to the car, so I decided to use it and just cut a hole in it for the uh, uh, for this hose to come through. I also um, I put this new uh, protective co um, protective sh uh, sheathing on it, just to uh, you know keep you know keep it from uh, getting damaged. Also moved over the uh, air conditioning lines that go to the receiver dryer. Um, they they wrote it slightly different on the Passat, and the receiver dryer is very different. Uh, on the all road here, there was a the intercooler bracket on the right side and um, slightly different routing of this so i decided to just move it all over it all bolts right up airbox fits in here no problem bolts right up to where it goes into the into the vehicle there no problem whatsoever this bracket here this black bracket I've, i i sandblasted and por'd it that's stock uh passat this is stock passat this is all passat and it sits on this angle on the other car as well and uh, this this here fits uh, right into the uh, the condenser, so um, you know, very uh, very much plug and play. Swap a few parts over, and that's about it. Um, another thing I got here, I've got the uh, intercooler bracket for the Passat. It fits slightly different, but I'm hoping to mount it here in the exact same spot as it was on the Passat. Uh, though the offset from this bracket here. Where you see that paint, that fresh paint, that's where the the rivets for the 2.7T intercooler uh, were attached, um, and uh, that bracket doesn't fit exactly the same. But I'll make it fit in a way that is looks stock and uh, hopefully is stock with stock parts. Um, then we have the fuel lines. Also, I've uh, moved over the uh, the fuel lines from the the Passat, and that's because the the 2.7T fuel lines ended, or the the aluminum part of the fuel line ended right about here, and then you have um, or you had uh, rubber lines to the rail around about this position here on the V6 and on the TDI the the lines come to the middle of the car here I just wanted to kind of keep it all stock looking I, I'm going to change these clamps I don't want any rust on anything so uh, I'm going to change those up um, I mean I could have put a piece of rubber from here over to this side but uh, that's not me I don't uh, you know don't like that so so I'll move the fuel lines over they fit pretty well without uh, too much uh, mess So the front section of the fuel lines routes exactly the same on the B5 Passat chassis as it does on this C5 All Road. It's only when it gets under the car that it's slightly different, but uh, pretty much all the way to the uh, uh, back seat, it's the yeah, routing is identical. One of the biggest differences is on the uh, All Road uh, and all gasoline engines, there was there are three lines that run through here. You got a supply, you have a return, and then you have the EVAP. Uh, perch solenoid uh, line and the diesels don't have that third uh, that third uh, fuel line and also uh, I came to find out once I removed this from the uh, Passat an interesting uh, interesting little thing is uh, on the uh, on the gasoline cars this cover under here is plastic and then the the lines just clip into it on the diesel um, the return line is actually uh, permanently attached to this uh, stainless steel bracket I thought it was actually just mild steel, but it's not. Uh, uh, it's not magnetic, so it's uh, and it's not aluminum. So, anyways, you see the little vents cut out. the The return line is permanently attached to here, and it actually does three loops. It goes all the way to the rear of the car, comes back towards the front of the car, and goes back again. And that is a, a makeshift uh, fuel cooler. Uh, you know, the, the you know the the pressures on these um, on these diesels are pretty high. Um, uh, fuel pressure and it heats up the fuel so uh, it gets uh, it gets cooled here so it's kind of neat that I uh, decided to use this 
Uh, the only diff the only thing I did is this front little plastic piece. This about you know this three inch piece is uh, original all road. I just cut it off. I put it here. Just I had the I had the uh, inner fender liner on here, and it just left a little bit of the fuel lines right here exposed, and uh, that's uh, no bueno. So I um, I put this on here, and then we'll move on to the back, and I'll, I'll uh, show you the difference back there. So the fuel line routing is identical until we get to the rear here on the uh, Passat, or at least the front wheel drive Passats. The fuel tank is uh, doesn't come up as uh, as far forward as this one. Um, uh, you know, obviously they have a lot more room back here without the diff. So the uh, the return line runs to roughly the same spot as you can see right here. Uh, it's actually about about an inch shorter than it was on the uh, on the all road fuel line, uh, the 2.7T. Or I mean any of these, but uh, you know it's still the rubber. The rubber line still reached fine, uh, and then the uh, the supply uh, obviously on the uh, on the all road it went to this uh, bracket that you see here where the fuel filter was. So that's that's the main supply line up there out of uh, out of the top of the sending unit uh, that would have gone to the filter. And you can see I <laughs> I did a kind of a Mickey Mouse thing here. I I coiled the fuel line, made two loops. And the reason I did this is. And I could have cut the line, and uh, I, I don't have a, a beading tool to, to create that bead on the end of the of, of the tube. I mean, they're not that expensive, but I don't have one right now. Uh, so I decided just to uh, loop it. And in hindsight, I could have done a slightly better job, but uh, you know, the camera is making it look even worse than it is, or that it appears to be. But uh, you know, it's uh, let's say it's for some shock absorption. It doesn't hit anything. It's properly attached, uh, you know, and it, it's not going to leak. And I, you know, it's it's an original line. These cars have very good, uh, you know, they they don't they don't have the typical issues that you experience uh, with a lot of the North American uh, uh, northern climates, uh, where you know you got all these fuel and brake lines rotting. I have never replaced a, a fuel or a brake line on uh, on any uh, Volkswagen Audi product that was made in the last twenty years, and that's because uh, they're done right. So yeah, that coil there just kind of to take up the extra room. Eventually, I might come in here and just cut it off here, and uh, if I got a tool to, to to make that bead on the end of the line. So yeah, that's um, you know that's a fuel line routing. Another change that had to be made in regards to fueling is the uh, the fuel pump. Um, this is the uh, two point seven T or any gasoline engine C five fuel pump, um, and the on the uh, diesels. The pump and tank uh, is much lower um, output in terms of uh, pressure uh, than the uh, the gasoline cars, and then it's bumped up at the mechanical pump on the back of the uh, of the head. So, um, what a lot of people do is they keep the original uh, gasoline engine pump in the in the fuel tank, and they install a, uh, basically they tee the supply and return lines to kind of relieve some of the pressure. Uh, and I just, I just think kind of that's kind of a uh, easy way out, or I should say, kind of a Mickey Mouse way to do it. And I, I took this. This is the sending unit out of the Passat. The way this sits in the Passat is this sits against the bottom of the tank, and then the the top of the sending unit is this got spring loaded. You basically put it down, thread the nut on, and it kind of holds the pump in place. Um, and here is your uh, fuel level sending um, unit. But anyways, the pump fits. It's the same diameter. Uh, um, the only difference is the the output here uh, on the on the gasoline engine comes on, out on a 90 on a diesel it comes straight out. I found out once I put it in the car that now with the diesel pump having the, the fitting coming straight up, it uh, you know it's a little tighter uh, against the top of the sending unit, but it doesn't hit, it doesn't kink it. It's uh, the way I did it. It uh, works well. Um, so yeah, and I have the proper pump in there, and uh, you know everything sh uh, should be good in that regard. And the last fueling change I had to make was to the fuel filler neck. I was originally thinking I might be able to reuse some parts out of the Passat filler neck, but uh, on on that uh, B5 Passat, the uh, filler neck is integral with the with the fuel tank, uh, so that wasn't going to work. Uh, I had heard other people doing what I what I did, and uh, it worked well. So what I did is I basically just drilled out. There's a plastic insert, that black piece you see in there that uh, fits into the filler neck and kind of moving it around a little bit uh, and that had to be drilled out the um, um, the nozzle for the diesel is about 15 sixteenths of an inch uh, 
OD, so that's what I had. I drilled this to just over an inch to give me a little bit of uh, room. Uh, and to do so, I, um, you know, basically I pushed down the uh, the flap there, which still works. Uh, pushed it down, put some rags in there, and then um, I actually pumped the fuel tank completely dry, took the sending unit out, let it uh, vent for, you know, a day or so. Just, you know, I didn't want any fumes in there and, you know, uh, you know, a, a spark would, uh, you know, <laughs> Would not be a good thing. So, anyways, put some rags in there. I mean, I was drilling through plastic, but still, you know, you can't ever be too sure. Um, you know, drilled it out, vacuumed it out, uh, and uh, and yeah, I've I've got 15 liters of diesel in it now. So, uh, in terms of uh, fueling, she's uh, good to go. I have a I have a, a little piece that goes in here around around the outside of the fuel neck that says diesel only. I'll also uh, change the uh, the decal here on the back of, or on the uh, inside of the um, fuel filler cap door uh, to say diesel only and uh, that part will be done.